Charlie Patton was only in his mid-40s when he died in 1934. He had only been recorded on four occasions, but he remains one of the giants of the acoustic tradition of the Mississippi Delta, who combined spiritual and secular lyrical imagery with an earthy lifestyle which allowed him to create some of the most resonant country blues material ever recorded. A unique performer, an instantly recognisable singer, he had an enormous influence on his Delta contemporaries. He showed great panache when playing live and has been called the first rock and roller. Patton's father was a preacher and Charlie grew up as one of 12 children on a farm in the Mississippi Delta. He moved to Will Dockery's plantation when he was still a child and learned to play the guitar around 1908 when he was 19. It has been said that Patton was the first great Delta bluesman, that he was the fountainhead from which that distinctive style flowed. He certainly had a very individual style of playing, extremely rampant and raw, yet rhythmic too. His vocal delivery was often hoarse, more of a holler than singing, which made him sometimes difficult to comprehend. He was also one of the first men to establish and develop the slide guitar sound. Not only did Patton play the blues, he lived it too. He was imprisoned, he drank heavily, he had around eight wives, and he travelled extensively, which may have accounted for the number of wives. Nor did Patton play the blues in a sombre and laid-back fashion. He was a consummate showman. He would often play his guitar behind his neck and between his legs. He learned from one of the earliest Delta bluesmen, Henry Sloan, but exactly what he learned isn't certain, as Sloan never recorded. By the time he was in his mid-twenties, the five-foot, five-inch Patton was known throughout the Delta playing at picnics, juke joints and house parties and levee camps. His friend Willie Brown often accompanied him, and the two of them must have put on some first-class entertainment. Despite his size, Patton had a big voice, which could carry more than 500 yards when he performed outdoors. He had time to hone his skills before he began recording, as he was around 40 when he was discovered. A Mississippi music store owner and part-time record company scout, Henry Spear contacted the Paramount Record Company and arranged for Patton to record in Richmond, Indiana on Friday, June the 14th, 1929. He recorded 14 sides on that occasion, probably the cream of his extensive repertoire at the time. The first record that Paramount released was Pony Blues, coupled with Banty Rooster Blues, and it established Patton's reputation. His third Paramount release, Mississippi Boeville Blues, was credited to The Masked Marvel, a case of marketing, 1929 style. What we know is that it was Patton who originally wrote to Spear asking if he could arrange for him to record. About three months later, Patton once again headed north, this time to Grafton, Wisconsin. There he recorded another 22 sides for Paramount, this time accompanied by Henry Sun Sims on fiddle. At his third recording session in 1930, Willie Brown accompanied him, blues pianist Louis Johnson and Sunhouse took the trip to keep them company. With the onset of the Depression, Patton's recording career took a downturn, like most blues performers of the era. He did not record again until 1934, when over a three-day period he recorded around 25 more sides. Although only about 10 were issued, although only about 10 were issued, his last wife, Bertha Lee, sang on some of those sides. Patton was now in poor health, and the couple quickly returned to Mississippi, where he died just three months later. Many of Patton's recordings were personal blues, tales of his own life, but they were songs that many of his Delta audience could relate to, which is clearly a significant factor in his success. He also recorded topical songs that were, in their own way, the newsreel of the Delta. For example, High Water Everywhere, about the Mississippi flood of 1927. If any performer can be said truly to reflect the sound of the birth of the blues, it was Charlie Patton. He was there at the start, absorbing and shaping the blues, besides creating the opportunities for others to record. 
He may not have been the first country blues player to record, but he was definitely the greatest of the early Delta bluesmen. Thanks for checking out this video. We're going to do a blues great every day. So be sure to come back for more. Take care, guys. See you soon.